Peter, Sir Francis Bacon is known as a philosopher. What was he philosophising about? What has he got to teach us? Yes, his great philosophy was so that we could one day come to know all things. <laughs> so, so, this, no, <laughs> not, a, not a huge topic. <laughs> <laughs> No, he, he, he set it up because he thought the teachings of Jesus, teachings about love mm. and so on, where people tried to practice it, but weren't, some people very good at it, some mm. not. Or oh, the majority not. The majority <laughs> not. And he says mm. um, there's been no real understanding, deep understanding. It's mm. been the dogma of the church, but in a, in a sense the dogma has hindered rather than yes. helped yeah. the development of the understanding. Because um, different cultures will have different viewpoints on yeah. it. And he said, really, that's what we should be aiming for, to understand that supreme law of love. Mm. But there are all the lesser laws, too, underneath that, mm. right down to the natural laws. Yeah. But the natural laws obey the higher laws. Yeah. And so if one can grasp the higher laws, he, he thought, and I think he demonstrated himself, then you mm. have some kind of control over the lower laws, yes. but only if you act in love. Yes. Mm. If you don't act in love, it doesn't happen. Mm. Um, so anyway, he... He thought his role was to develop, or start in process, um, the development of a philosophy which would be genuinely supportive of the teachings of love, which he called divinity. Yes. Yeah. And he refers to divinity as the wisdom of love that's inspired into the hearts mm. of each of us, that's spoken by the prophets, recorded in the, the scriptures mm. and so yeah. on. Um, but it can be inspired into anyone's heart, that this inspiration of love that then speaks to us through the throat and into the mind as, yes. as wisdom mm. and inspires us and gives us um, um, intuitive intuitive wisdom yes. about things mm. and then we act, act out of love in that way mm. but also the question we have to make our will that will of love because we have a self-will too we have yes. a choice yeah we do this we free, selfish free will, will. <laughs> yes so yeah. and to really understand if we go a selfish way mm. what happens then yeah. But if we go the more spiritual way, yeah. loving way, what happens then? Yes. So you, we need to have comparisons. Mm. Preferably, he said, you know, um, not, not in actual life. Take examples yes. from actual life, but put it on stage for other people to see and learn from in, in that way. Yes, so, so you're kind of learning from somebody else's mistakes, as it yes, were. Yes, yes. And um, which we do. You mm. know, and, uh, if we go to, to theatre, we see plays, films, and... Um, even watching other people, we, we learn we do, in yeah, that way. Very much so. Yeah. And from our parents. I remember my parents were super wonderful parents, but um, one or two things they did, I thought, I'm never going to yeah. do, you know, <laughs> make think, my children do that. I think thing, every, you know. every parent said that. <laughs> every child said that rather yeah. about their parents, haven't they? Yes. Yeah. And then each generation makes its own mistakes, yes. but also learns from their predecessors. Yeah. But he thought there should be a proper scientific body set up for this. Yeah. And, I'm not, and not just modern science. Modern science is fine, but that's only looking at what he saw as one third of the whole picture. Mm. He said science should be studying um, the three worlds of the natural world, the human world, which yeah. is the world of the psyche and soul. Yeah. Mm. Soul being slightly higher yeah. than psyche. And, and the um, divine world, which is the, also called the spiritual world, yeah. of the art, what Plato called the archetypes. So modern science has done the first two, but it hasn't really gone into That's the right. third. It's, or, it's, yeah, it's, it's certainly to. doing the first one very, mm. very well. Yeah. It started into the second mm. level, but it doesn't really touch mm. the third level. It's almost if it's taboo. Yes, yeah. Um, and yet some of the great scientists have the, the huge breakthroughs through inspiration. Do. But nobody's studying what is inspiration, mm. how does it work? Mm. You know? And where does it come from? Where does it come from? <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes. And actually quantum, the quantum world really plays into this, doesn't yes, it? Yes, mm. quantum. You could, could actually yeah. say it's science breaking into that mm. more spiritual yes. unknown. It is an unknown world, yes. you know. Yeah. So he wanted that to happen. And, and he also felt, first of all, we have to build up a foundation, which he called a history yes. of observations either from real life or from experiments, mm. observe what's going on, note down the results of those, those observations, mm. and catalogue it so you make a history. Yes. And he says from that history you raise it to the mind so that the mind can see it and draw out what we think are the laws or yes. axioms, mm. and then you test it out to see if that mm. was a, you got it right or yes. not, and if you haven't got it right you go through the process yeah. again. And they, 
And he says, if eventually your axiom or idea stands the test of time and is truly good mm. and useful, yes. then you might consider it as truth. Yeah. But not until then. Yeah, so Otherwise, it has to be tested and it has, has to, to prove itself. has to prove itself over yes. time. Because mm. just over, you know, yeah. five years, ten years and long enough, you know, yeah. it's got to be a long yes. period of time yes. to really prove itself. Um, but but one's still set in motion. Mm. Um, so you truly, I mean, he really truly is talking about keeping an open mind and not committing yourself to theories that, yes. that may later be disproved. But because you're so committed to it, you won't see the proof. It's no, like that's not right. Going to see the wood for the yes. trees. Yeah. But he's also saying not hold back, not yeah. have your theory and not do anything. He says yeah. no, no, put it into practice. Yeah. But your practice yeah. should be charitable, yeah. philanthropic. Mm. He says because um, if you're acting in love, it must be charitable, yeah. philanthropic. It can't yes. be selfish. Yeah. If it's selfish, greedy, or for yeah. power or money or whatever, you know, grasping things, mm. the sort of you could say almost normal human things out of uh, the way we've evolved, yes. grasping for. Yeah out of fear or then it gets become greed after mm. that. that. That is not this path. Mm. This path is for those who can act out of love yeah. in a charitable way. So he would be truly appalled by the state of modern science and, and, and the big companies that control so much of it and it's for shareholders He'd be appalled pockets, by all not, the greed. Not for, 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 for the good of mankind. Yes, I'm sure whole. he'd be appalled by yeah. the greed. Mm. And, and the disparity of, of some who, uh, you know, 1% who yes. earn a huge, huge yes. amount compared with others, mass yes. the world who earns so very, mm. very little and live in poverty. He said that the, pro the first thing we have to do as humanity is lift everybody out of poverty. Because yeah. so, mm. he's working for a golden age. Yes. He said there could be no golden age if people are living in poverty. Yes. He said that, that is a, it's a sickness, it's a curse. Yes. Created by us. Yeah. You know. So, has to be healed. So he's he's given us a path to follow, and we we are partly on it. But it's that the question really is, I suppose, that we need to sort of take on and think about further is how we can fully bring mankind onto that path and take take us where he sees us going. Yes, that's Which right. It's truly a, a wonderful vision. Yes, it's a great um, vision, and he really believed in a golden age. Yeah. And in his utopia called New Atlantis, he gives a sort of idea of a what could be. The path towards a golden age, where people are living peacefully and rule very well yeah. politically and so on. Yeah. And um, and this search for truth is going is an ongoing thing, mm. and everyone helping each other. This this land called Ben Salem, um, or island called Ben Salem, um, gives a good idea of it there. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs>